is to benefit us and to benefit his work Amen. in the kingdom of God. I, I probably told you I'll never forget what a lady told me when I resigned the first church I pastored. Brother and Sister Curtis, I probably told you about it, but they had bought me a brand new set of tires on the week before I had made up my mind I was going to resign the next Sunday. And they bought me a brand new set of tires, and I, I felt a little bad about resigning <laughs> the church because they had they'd been so good to us. And she said, Brother Starnes, God knows that you need those tires wherever you go. Oh. Amen. And said, you don't feel bad about it because we purchased them. Amen. God knows you need them. Amen. And certainly God knew I need them, that's for sure. Amen. But sometimes we go through these times of life. And God puts us through them to train us and to get us ready for greater things than He has for us. We wouldn't think about having to go to the backside of a desert be a sheep herder. That's right. That God was going to use us in something bigger in later life. But this is what Moses did. Amen. He could have went a lot of places, but God put him on the backside of the desert in the wilderness to herd sheep. And how in the world is he going to get in training there? That's right. God sent him to school. Amen. Where he wanted Amen. him to be. Amen. Have you ever heard kids say, I, I don't want to go to that school. I, I want to go that across the country over yonder. Amen. But you know, there's a purpose and a reason why that we go through things in life that we go through. So God was prepared. When God chose Moses to be the shepherd of his people, he arranged for him to be educated yes, sir. in the best schools of that day. Amen. Which happened to be Egyptian as the adopted son of Pharaoh's daughter, got his education, his training, and Moses went through a lot of things. Yeah, he did. Just starting from a baby, he was put out in a little water, put out in the Nile River, and to be found by Pharaoh's daughter, brought under her care, and all of this, God was arranging him. Amen. Of what God wanted him to be. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise it's amazing how God works on our life. I think of preachers today. I think of Sunday school teachers. I think of church workers of all description. That uh, in my life and from my vision, I thought they'd never amount to anything. Amen. They they couldn't teach. Amen. They couldn't hold an office in the church. And uh, they just wouldn't accomplish anything in life. But it turned out to be God used them. That's right. Praise the Lord. Some of them today are pastoring. Some are evangelizing. Some are over ACE schools across the nation. Uh, large schools. But in our earlier days, we thought they'd never amount to anything. But God saw fit. Amen. To train him and to train you and I for the purpose of life. Preparing the 70 elders as support. The story in our text takes place after his last and they already accepted or escaped Egypt and were all the way to the promised land of Canaan. And the people were growing tired of eating nothing but men. And had begun to complain. Man, that sounds like people of America today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You give them a, a steak on a nice plate. They're almost like uh, the fellow was. He told his wife, he said, I want you to fix me two eggs for breakfast this morning. I want one of them fried and I want one of them scrambled. And so she fixed them. And when she brought them to the table, he fussed at her and said, you fried the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of like a lot of people in America today. God puts us to the test, and we don't like the test. That's right. Amen. Amen. God had to direct these 70 people. Because the people 
of Israel were complaining. You know, some said we should have just stayed back in Egypt. I know. Yeah. We had a lot of cucumbers to eat. Amen. We had garlic, onion. We ought to just stay back there. And even people of today will say almost the same thing. The Bible says or teaches us that you can take a pig or a swine, clean him up, dress him up, put a beautiful blue ribbon around his neck, turn him loose, and that pig will get in the first hot water he can find. That's right. And that's what people do when they forsake God. That's right. And they forsake the church. Amen. They end up in the pig's pen. That's right. In the hog water. The Bible says it's like a dog that turns to his own vomit. Amen. And go back in the way of the world. That's right. And probably you know some people today. Amen. Forsaken the church. Forsaken the Lord. Say they're going to do things their own way. Go where they want to go. Do what they want to do. But they wind up in a difficult situation. And they hate to call them the church. They hate to call them the pastor. Because they know they have been wrong. And know they have done wrong. And they just kind of hate to confess that they made a mistake. But uh, he was also feeding are feeling frustrated because there was nothing he could do about it. How is he going to feed thousands and thousands of people meat when they want it? Amen. Amen. They said, we're tired That's right. of eating man. We want something different. We want a T-ball. Amen. Amen. And he cried out to the Lord, what did I do to deserve <laughs> The burden of this people like this. Are they my children? I didn't bear them. <laughs> Should I worry about them? Where am I supposed to get meat to feed them with? You know the story how God, Amen, provided quail to rain down out of heaven. Amen. Amen. Gave them so much. I believe the Bible said there was three cubits deep all over the place. And they had so much meat that it came out their nose, their ears, and they got tired of it. <laughs> Amen. God said they want me, I'm going to give them me. That's right. Amen. And uh, he's going to do the same thing today. He says to a lot of people, well, you don't want me, you don't want to serve me, you don't want to go to the house of worship, you don't want to go to church, you don't want to get up and go to the house of the Lord. I'll give you what you want. That's right. Yeah. And so they end up in difficult trouble of all kinds. Diseases. Yeah. Amen. Illnesses. Yeah. And they don't know which way to go. They don't know which way to turn. I can't carry all these people even by myself. The Lord is, is too far heavy for me, the Lord. That's what Moses said in Numbers 11 and 11. 14. Despite of all of his training, despite God has given leadership ability, even despite the spirit which was upon him, Moses was the end of his wits. Have you ever heard a mother say, I'm at the end of my wits? Kids just run them crazy. <laughs> Amen. As fast as they pick up things, kids are throwing it back down. And they feel like they're accomplishing nothing. Yeah, Brother Christian. Most, yes. And most of the time, they run us as crazy as we'll let them. That's right. That's right. If we don't stop it, we don't turn it around. Amen. It don't get better. It gets worse. That's right. And, uh, of course, I preach this. I believe this. I believe one of the reasons that we have the generations of youth today is because the lack of of correcting of the parents for the children. I agree. Oh, yeah. Amen. When, when the, our government even want to take prayer out of school, yeah. they don't want them to pray in the school, they don't want the parents correcting them, parents get in trouble if they whip their children. That's right. They didn't do that when I was a kid. 
They didn't do that when I was Amen. Uh -uh. If you need a whipping, you got it. And if you got a whipping at school, you got another one at home. Amen. <laughs> and if you got in trouble at school, you got in trouble when you got home. Amen. If your parents found out about it. That's right. Amen. If you got into trouble at school, you tried your best not to let mom and dad know that you got in trouble. Another thing about the correction of the kids and the parents allowing them to do what they do, and this kind of puts it on the other foot, sometimes as leaders counseling these people, we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. That's right. And we step and, and, and encourage the same thing we're trying to stamp out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's true. We gotta, we gotta correct them, you know. Somehow or another. Of course, they, they try to give you easier ways to correct them today. Uh, some parents, I guess, stand them in the corner. And uh, others do different things to correct them. Maybe cut their TV off for three days. And they can't watch TV. Amen. All of those things. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's brought around a generation today of youth that is hard and difficult to deal with. That's right. And also, I know by the same token, there are some adults today that correct children in the wrong way. That's right. I know that children are abused. I got so disturbed uh, by watching something on Facebook. You may have seen it something on Facebook that wasn't pleasing to me at all, but this lady had a boyfriend. This was not even his child. Amen. But he, he whipped that child. He even took his fist and was hitting that little child in the back in the stomach. Then picked him up and threw him across uh, a chair and a Ooh. chair turned over with him. All that. of these things. I said, man, Somebody needs to find out who that guy is and uh, do something about his his just he really wasn't discipline, he was just abusing that child. And I thought, you know, that child's small, he can't do nothing about it. He vowed and all these things are happening. And thousands of people said it happened. But they don't know who the fella is. And I don't know if there's a way you can find out or not, put it on the computer. And Facebook, but somebody needs to find out about him. All right, our time is up, and I, I knew I'd get started and be back. <laughs>